Thank you all for being here on this beautiful day. So if it sounds like a truism, it's because it is. Measure what matters, a seemingly simple solution complicated by the inertia of the current system. How do we change this system so that we can better meet the needs of people and planet? To start, we can consider why we need to change things at all. What's wrong with the way we measure our economy in this country? What's wrong with gross domestic product, GDP, the headline indicator that our governments use to gauge progress? Well, look around. Current indicators are missing the mark. Important quality of life trends, such as equality, are down, while GDP, gross domestic product, is up. Check out this graph. Income for a handful of people, the top 1%, climbs over 30 years, while average income levels out and even declines. GDP goes up. More spending on food or health care costs, GDP goes up. More spending on war, more cleaning up after natural and human pollution disasters, GDP goes up. The late Jonathan Rowe testified about this very issue before a Senate committee three years ago. Quote, how did it happen that the nation's economic hero is a terminal cancer patient going through a costly divorce? How is it that Congress talks about stimulating the economy when much that will actually be stimulated is the destruction of things that it says it cares about on other days? How did the notion of economy become so totally uneconomic? Simply put, GDP growth does not indicate genuine improvements in well-being. It is out of touch with the economic realities that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. The unwavering pursuit of GDP growth, whether explicitly detailed in policies or implied by government and business operating in concert, is actually an enormous problem in and of itself. Measuring what matters is fundamentally important because effective indicators based on clear goals will let us know how we're doing. They can be used to evaluate policy and hold policymakers accountable. Indicators provide feedback from economies and ecosystems to those who we count on to do something about undesirable conditions. And indicators also orient us toward our shared goals. Even if we had total consensus on our goals, as well as a plan for how to achieve them, we need indicators and measurements to know how close we are and which direction to go. Now there's a direct connection between measuring what matters and the other solutions that folks here today will unpack. How do we measure money in the economy or put a value on common assets? How do we measure inequality? How do we distinguish between a job that literally costs more to create than it pays out in wages and a job with benefits to workers and returns to society? And just as important, how do we use, inf use this information? And here are cl three clear ways to measure what matters. One. Take social inequality and the distribution of income and wealth into account. Other social factors, such as the value of parenting and household work, and the cost of commuting, should be measured as well because these factors matter. Two, the current gauges that are used to make major decisions focus almost entirely on the human economy. Take the rest of nature into account by measuring the ecological assets that our functioning economies depend upon. And three, redefine our goal. What is the economy for? Is it for increasing the value of stocks on Wall Street? No. Is it for endless growth on a finite planet? Nope. Is it for maximizing the amount of money that trades hands each day? Definitely not. Then why do we measure these things so carefully and report these figures on a daily and quarterly basis as though they are meaningful measures of genuine progress? The person credited with being the architect of our national accounts, Simon Kuznets, he himself once said, the welfare of a nation can scarcely be inferred from a measurement of national income as defined by the GDP. Goals for more growth should specify of what and for what. Our economy is for delivering shared prosperity. Measure well-being and quality of life directly to do what our economic indicators don't. We've been working on these ideas for quite a long time. And one of the best parts about these solutions today is that many of them have been developed over decades. Currently, very exciting work is happening, and I will leave you with these hopeful examples. At the city level, Sustainable Seattle works on regional sustainability indicators and has stated goals of social justice, collaboration, and stewardship. At the state level, Folks at the Gund Institute have already been measuring improved indicators for the state of Vermont for over seven years. 
and we're close to making the genuine progress indicator, the GPI, an official measure here with a project led by Gunn Fellow, Eric Zensi. In Maryland, GPI recently became an officially reported state statistic. And even at the global level, the United Nations, OECD, and the European Union have initiatives like Beyond GDP aimed at measuring what matters. Now these hopeful efforts have some critics, and they may point to imperfect accounting methods or general disagreement about what to measure. But they miss the point. It is better to be approximately right than exactly wrong. Not measuring well-known social and environmental costs is exactly wrong. And so today, we need to reframe the conversation to be about shared prosperity and improving well-being rather than driving up flawed economic indicators. Our indicators must reflect the core values of our citizens and the goals that we share. And this is why I encourage that until our governments redefine our economic goals and measure what matters, all day, all week, Occupy, Wall Street, 